Diversity in ship design is something I hear people asking for a lot in Star Citizen. Too many wings. They look like airplanes. It's too generic. Consolidated Outland says, nah, dog. We came here to mix things up. Here is your Space Tomato review of the Consolidated Outland Nomad. This is the best place to get a cinematic roundup of the pros and cons, design choices, and overall feel of a ship in Star Citizen, including a very important surprise about the ship that you may have missed. And if you want more live opinions of these ships, make sure to hop over to my Twitch as well. Now, let's see what this little monstrosity has in store for us. There is something about this design that had me going from questionable, to accepting, to Obama-faced approval, to full-on digging it in the space of four days. I have become a fan of the design. Yes, it's a bit weird. Yes, it takes a little imagination, and yes, I'm ready to throw all reason aside for this ship because it's unique, it's fun, and it's ugly in a charming way. But by the end of this review, I'm hoping you'll start to see my angle as to why this is actually a pretty good ship for what it is. Now, it's actually quite impressive for its size. That's because it ain't all looks. At about 27 meters long and 18 meters wide, it's a small ship. But it's all about how you use it, right? See, with this size, you're getting three size 3 weapon mounts, eight missiles, and a lot of cargo space. 24 SCU to be exact, enough to haul 60,000 UEC of valuable minerals. However, if you ask me, given the company's mission and message as well as the general idea of this ship, I think this is actually more for trading life's necessities out in the lesser populated areas for the small villages and cut off homesteads. This is the kind of ship I could see being the main ship in a single player RPG about a swashbuckling space running last minute deliveries and dangerous space to villages kind of guy that you know as the savior. But that's just me. Besides the weapons and the generous cargo space though, the biggest and most important aspect of this ship that has not really been brought up much is the utility mount available over the cargo bay. Utility mounts are a big deal because they allow the ship to be customized for vastly different roles. While the obvious application here would be a tractor beam to move cargo on board easily, imagine also using it to grab asteroid chunks to ferry over to the mouth of an Orion, or parts of a ship to carry to the mouth of a Reclaimer or a Vulture. Maybe tractor beams aren't your thing, you could throw a mining laser on the deck and easily mine and store raw ore to be transported to a refinery ship or station. And those are only the possibilities of two different utilities. The Nomad is going to end up being a much more important and useful ship than it may have originally appeared. As the smallest ship with medium cargo transport and utility capabilities, I see this ship quickly becoming one of the staple workhorses of the verse. Which is why I have purchased a couple to give away over on Twitch over the next few months. Besides the apparent usefulness of this ship though, there are some very interesting developments in the looks and design department as well. The design in my opinion is summed up best by the word monolithic. I may actually title this review the mini monolith because the design screams monolithic structure to me, but the size is anything but. The place where this is most obvious besides the very singular design of the ship is the cockpit. It is very stubborn, if you will, in its form and placement. It looks as though this large, solid object just needed a place to see from and decided to pop out a small but equally inelegant shape for that purpose. While it appears unrefined and ham-fisted on closer inspection, it, it also just seems so purposeful and calculated. It's smart, but rugged. And that goes for the whole ship. The outside feels like one massive shape flying through space, like a stone in a stream. 
However, it is lined with detailed etches, exact geometry, and design choices that are actually rather pleasing to the eye. For instance, I love the contrast between the darker details on the cockpit, aerodynamics and the back and bottom, and the metallic surface covering the rest of the ship. It's spartan, but also busy, and from a very specific angle, it actually kind of looks like a grasshopper to me. Yup, there it is. That brings me to one of the interesting design choices of the ship, Hovertech landing gear. It's a bit random, but if you consider the company itself, its mantra, its missions, and its CEO, it makes sense. Even in the recent coverage of the ship, the marketing team made a reference to the Tesla Cybertruck. The company is forward-thinking and is looking for unique ways to flex that strength, and the CEO is constantly looking for ways to become the company for people to go to for the most unique ships and the best buying experience. Moving inside, you'll notice a few things immediately. One, the geometric shapes of the exterior have only been exacerbated inside. Two, the orange trellis frame filled style of consolidated outland lives on. And three, the design language still sees quite a lot of growth here. While I can absolutely see the refined industrial look of the Pioneer and even the Mustang in this, there's a definite effort to move towards something a bit more mechanically alien. The etchings of the exterior, interlocking moving pieces, diagonal shapes opening downwards providing a more claustrophobic feel, the distinct technological feel from things like digital buttons and panels in the cockpit, even the fact that the new CO standard is a four panel sliding door mechanism that seems to all slide and fold in on itself, much like this Xeon tech. All of these details are pushing the company in bold new directions, and I'm excited to see it. As the ship is so small, it's a very basic layout, with the entrance standing off to the standard port side, the components being accessible in the hallway and the living corners, which are also sandwiched in the middle, with the cockpit being up front. It's a bit squished, I'll say that much. As you get out of the pilot seat, you'll find yourself face to face with the door, which is actually kind of annoying. But the team has managed to make good use of the space with slide out chairs and an efficient kitchen. Also some nice plants here and there in the living quarters there. Make me feel at home. Besides this though, the interior is not incredibly remarkable as it maintains the technologically spartan design I highlighted before, with a weirdly placed small window looking out back over your cargo. Though it does make sense, as you might want to see your cargo, and all of their cargo ships do have the ability to view your cargo without leaving the ship, so this makes sense, but I do hope that glass is strong. Speaking of the cargo deck, let's talk a little bit more about it. Having it on the exterior is strange, I'll give you that, but it adds some interesting complications to your play. It will probably be incredibly easy to scan and steal cargo on this ship when it's left alone as a drawback to the amazing versatility itself. And it also brings up the question of what will happen during extreme maneuvers. But I assume the same thing that will happen with every other ship. Nothing. As the deck does contain grav plates like other ships, you don't necessarily find boxes flying around inside of your caterpillar. What this deck also allows for is the easy storage and transport of small ground vehicles such as the rock mining buggy or the Cyclone Multipurpose Buggy. That makes this a great little transport for a one or two person mining team, racing team, or combat team. This actually falls quite in line with events such as the Daymar Rally coming up in January. It makes this the smallest pocket carrier for ground vehicles, a potential dropship, or even a light air support ship for troops on the ground or in space. Seriously. A few rocket launchers, a couple rail guns, a chain gun in the back, you could deal out some damage from this ship. Just make sure you back the vehicles in or, well, you may have some problems on your hands. But seriously, get creative with this ship and you can make it do a lot for you. That's why I'm willing to call this the most useful small ship in the game and a ship that I think is going to see a lot of use and a lot of love in the future. I was lukewarm to this ship at first, and besides the cool sounds during flight,
which admittedly can get really annoying. And the ridiculously low hydrogen fuel efficiency, seriously, this was just three minutes you're seeing here. I'm very excited to see how this ship will be used in the future, as it's one of my surprised favorites of the last few years. I am very excited to see yet another ship come out and define the design and style of a company moving forward, and to see it twice in one month is quite the treat. The Nomad is a great ship in my eyes with all the benefits including the utility mount. You can't ask for much more in such a small package. I can't wait for the next small to mid-sized ship to make it into the game, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this review and you're looking for more, I'll have some gameplay I recorded while developing this video, and I'll also have other ships coming out for years to come. So make sure to subscribe for more, and if you feel like it, you can become a channel member or a Patreon member to help support these reviews directly. Also don't forget to jump on over to my Twitch channel where I'm currently hosting a Mercury Star Runner and Nomad giveaway, as well as more in the future. Thanks again for checking this video out. I'll catch you guys in the next one.